to SF Live. I'm your host, Christina Marie Flores. Now, maybe you were lucky enough to live in San Francisco and know Harvey Milk uh, when he was a supervisor here at that time. Or maybe you've seen the recent movie Milk. Well, either way, Harvey Milk was nothing short of an amazing individual here in our city. Tonight, we talk with Harvey's nephew, who continues Harvey's vision and efforts in community activism. Please help me welcome Stuart Milk. How are you, Stuart? Good, good. I'm thrilled to be here. Excellent. Well, welcome. Now, you are the nephew of Harvey Milk, so you are his brother's son. Yes. Mm -hmm. Harvey had uh, one sibling, my dad, and my dad had two children, me and my brother. So we had a very small family, and he was my only uncle, and uh, um, kind of my touchstone. Uh, uh, he he, uh, he was assassinated when I was 17, so he was in my life for 17 wonderful years. Now, now, what type of personality? I remember him as being a very big, fun, flamboyant personality, uh, but he was early on when you knew him. Um, what was his personality like that at home, his private personality? Well, he, was, he, was, he was always alive. He was one of those people who were always, who was filled with energy and kind of just the, the lightness of the moment. Mm -hmm. um, even in serious times, he would inject humor. So I always joke that, that I did not inherit that part of Harvey because I'm... I'm tend to be somewhat serious. I don't believe feel the that. Weight of no the world. I do, I do. So, um, but he was, I mean, he could inject the most appropriate humor into the, the most amazing situations. And, um, and, and, and you always felt that he was present mm -hmm. with you, that he fully showed up in life. And, you know, it's one of those people that you meet and he's there, his mind isn't somewhere else. And so he had an amazing ability to communicate with people. Mm -hmm. Now, was he out to his family and your family at a younger age, or did he come out altogether when he was 40? Because I know in the movie it mentioned that it wasn't until approximately 40 years old that he did come out publicly. But privately, what age? Yeah, he was know? out to my to my father and to me and my brother and my mother. Mm -hmm. um, uh, hit my grandmother, his mother, um, passed away when I was two. So she passed away in 1963, and um, and I don't believe that he was out to her, mm -hmm. but he certainly was out um, at a at the time that he was in New York City. Mm -hmm. And we have we have a picture up there right now. If we can bring up the picture, this is right outside of the camera shop. Yes, this was uh -huh. his first campaign, and my parents had come up to lend support to his first supervisory campaign and visit him. And at that time, Scott and, and Harvey were still together. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's that. So he still had the ponytail. And, uh, <laughs> and so he wasn't the in the business suit yet. <laughs> I like that. And then this picture right here is a picture of your father and Harvey. Yes. Uh -huh. So that's my dad, Bob, and, uh, and Harvey. And this is in Woodmere, um, Long Island, New York, where they both grew up. Uh -huh. he, look at that look on his face okay now this is a different Harvey look yeah this is um, this is amazing this is he co-produced um, uh, Jesus Christ Superstar on Broadway with Tom O'Harrigan and so this was his transition from teacher stockbroker then kind of avant-garde um, theater uh, uh, gentleman and actually um, he Harvey took me to my first Broadway musical, so mm -hmm. which was Jesus Christ Superstar, and, and my mother and I went opening night, and he took me backstage and he explained to me the message behind the musical Jesus Christ Superstar, and really the message. I mean, a Jewish family, and so <laughs> he's bringing me back and explaining to me this wonderful social activism message in in the musical Jesus Christ Superstar and in Christ. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it just it was a really defining moment for me. Uh huh. And this picture here is in Chambers. Is it is uh -huh. that 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 was him in in his um in his office Looks in city happy. hall and where harvey loved the best which is a stage <laughs> and inspiring people and this was his his actually only his first and own and last um pride where he was a supervisor and so you know he only got one um and so this was harvey um as already a supervisor at pride mm -hmm. That's amazing. That you know, you you look so much like him. You really do have his eyes. It's the dark circles. Uh, no, 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 no. You do. You have the same. Sway. He has very smiley eyes. And oh, I that's say very that, kind. That no, he, he definitely was. And remember, just uh, I come from a police family. Uh, I have nine cops in my family, SFPD. So the force is with me in many ways. But you know, I, my father. I talked to my dad about Harvey, and he really did respect him quite a bit. And uh, I think we were just speaking a little earlier about how young gay people in San Francisco um, 
don't really realize what it was like just really recently, you know, as far as the gay hate crimes and the way that um, the homosexuals are treated in San Francisco. Can you talk a little bit about that topic? Well, and actually, um, even my generation, um, uh, you know, I... We, we did not have the freedoms that we have today, even when I was a teen um, growing up. But certainly when Harvey was, uh, you know, at the beginning of Milk, I think it's very powerful the way they show just for being in a bar, um, gay men being taken away in police wagons because it was considered illegal to congregate and it was illegal for men to have consensual sexual se uh, consensual sexual relations with each other mm -hmm. so therefore they were arrested and um, they were dark dingy bars that that folks would meet and it was the the generation that came before me Harvey's generation um, really had the message stay masked stay closeted don't be authentic and I'm just so proud that you know my uncle said you know not only am I not going to do that but I'm going to proclaim you know our strength and our and and the power that we give to the world, we meaning a more diverse world, a more diverse community, the LGBTQ community provides a, a medicine to the world. I, one of my favorite sayings that Harvey would say is that you are the, you are the medicine that the world needs, even mm. when the world doesn't realize it. Oh, yeah. And our, it's our differences. So if you really think about that, um, if you're different, your medicine is so much more powerful than if you're like everyone else. Mm -hmm. So really the most diverse in our community provide us with some of the greatest gifts. And unfortunately, going back to what you're saying, back to the, even to the 1970s when Harvey kind of proclaimed that message, that was not kind of the common paradigm is celebrate diversity. There was, mm -hmm. there was not in mainstream society the view that we embrace everyone who's different. And I think we've come a long way and we've got a long way to go still. That's true. And I remember one of the strong points that he used to stand on was to be out to really get as many people really to be out so that people know the brothers, the friends, the husbands, the dentists, the doctors, whomever. Uh, once you are visible in a community, you have more strength. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. I mean, we, and, and today we still need to do that. I, I, I wish I could tell you that, um, you know, that things have changed for young people all around the country. I work in, in programs that support young at-risk individuals and including members of the LGBTQ community. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, in many communities today, the message is still stay masked, stay quiet, you know, uh, maybe it's okay with a wink, that, but, but keep it, you know, behind closed doors. And it's a horrible message to give youth. And so um, part of what's going on here with Prop 8 in San Francisco this week, um, with the folks who are out there um, with, with, with a message of really hate and um, uh, lack of tolerance. Mm -hmm. And I don't really like the word tolerance um, personally, yeah. um, because what, you know, you know, that was a word that I think was appropriate maybe 30 years ago, mm -hmm. but who wants to be tolerated? No, embraced, not tolerated. It, it is celebrated. Yeah. I mean, uh -huh. it's really, it is, it, when, when I meet the LGBTQ youth of today, they are just amazing, 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 amazing. Mm -hmm. All of our youth are. And we have to celebrate diversity. It, what's, it's what makes us stronger. I like using the phrase, I live on weekends when I'm home, when I'm not working. I'm in Florida and we've got, um, you know, we've got a mosquito issue there. And, okay. you know, I tolerate <laughs> mosquitoes because I want to be outside. So I tolerate mosquitoes, but the LGBTQ community are the dragonflies and the butterflies and the ladybugs of the world. And we need to be embraced and celebrated and the world has to realize that. That is beautiful. That's true. It's, I'm, I am lucky enough to have a daughter that came out when she was 13, living here in the city, fourth generation San Franciscan she is. And let me tell you, that girl is proud, 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 and happy, and just joyful to be in this city. And as her parent, I feel so much better, because I know that the city is much more open. But as Bevan Dufty did correct me last time we were here, it's far from being over as far as being completely safe. And San Francisco is such a wonderful place, but there's still, even here, violence against against um, transgender, against um, gay, you know, lesbian, and can you talk? You.